Hi, Ricardo. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Yeah, we briefly met uh, at KubeCon Paris, if you remember. Sorry, uh, I don't remember that, but uh, glad to see you here. Yeah, Rajas introduced us. Uh, I was actually working on uh, Kubernetes uh, reference architecture. Awesome. It's, is this your first time in this meeting? Yeah, yeah. I'm also planning to demo my test bed and uh, a pattern that I built. Sweet. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you. Let's wait a couple of minutes uh, to see if other folks will join and then we can we can kick off. All right, looks like we don't have Ricardo today, so we can probably kick off uh, the meeting. Let me, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. Okay, now you should be able to see me as well. Um, all right, let's see, share my screen, hopefully that works. All right. Okay. I don't know. Do you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay. Should have the agenda on it. If not, let me know. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so let's see. Uh, we will start by just covering, you know, if you haven't read it, go through the agenda notes. You'll see the upcoming events. There will be dates for CFPs, deadlines. Um, so if you're willing to submit a talk, this is your one-stop place to figure out what's coming up for the cloud native environment uh, conferences. And so, yeah, that's that's uh, that's important. If you if you would like to also collaborate with someone um, and submit a talk, you can use the channel and look at the dates here and propose a pair up if you want to. All right, so we can start by introductions. So Anup, do you want to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, hey guys, my name is Anup Ghatge. Uh, I work for Salesforce. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it here, but uh, yeah, basically I got introduced to uh, the CNCF organizational uh, committee through uh, Priyanka Sharma and Taylor. Um, and yeah, so we run one of the largest uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, by size and all of this stuff as per my knowledge. And, you know, uh, Salesforce is also dabbling in AI. So there's quite, uh, there's quite a bit of overlap in, I guess, what we are trying to understand, the limitations, the problems, the solutions, things like that, and what the community is also working on based on the white paper and previous discussions. So looking forward to collaborate with everyone and happy to be here. Awesome. Welcome, Anup. Welcome. Ricardo, you want to go yes. next? Yes. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ricardo Martinelli. I'm working for Red Hat. I've been actively working with the Kubeflow community for the past six months, acting more as the one of the uh, release members for the upcoming Kubeflow 19. Um, also have some contributions with the pipelines components under the Kubeflow. So I'm just here for as a listener to understand what is the uh the objectives of this new working group. Yeah, look, that's it. Awesome. Uh Jana Kiram. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jani Kiram, short name uh, Jani. Uh, I am an independent research analyst based out of Hyderabad, India. Uh, been a CNCF ambassador for a long time. I uh, didn't renew it last time, but I've been associated with CNCF for quite some time. Uh, so currently I do two things. I am a market research analyst. I write uh, and publish content at Forbes, Newstack, and a couple of other publications. I'm also an advisor to uh, microservices and Gen AI platform companies. Uh, so this is my first ever uh, meeting with, with with you folks so i'm pretty excited i have a short demo on uh something that i built on my test bed i have a lab with multiple gpus and running a kubernetes cluster so i want to show you something that i built called event driven drag architecture uh, so i'm looking forward to showing that amazing welcome mm -hmm. thank you welcome hello Do we have you in the call? Hello, yeah, I'm the next one. My name is Matthias, hello. Um, I'm working at Red Hat and I'm working on the serverless part, uh, specifically um, Knative, which is um, also on the agenda of the CNCF. I am also was in the past active on like the cloud events community from CNCF as well. And yeah, we are here also today to show uh, POC that we did for LLM agentic workflows based on Kubernetes. Our POC is actually based on um, Knative eventing as for the like event driven approach and invocation of the tools. Yeah, and I think I'm active in Knative almost right from the start, so quite a few years right now. So uh, that's it for me. So Callum, you're 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 up. Oh yeah, um, I'm Callum. I'm also doing serverless at Red Hat with Matthias. Uh, I've been working on Knative for a bit over a year now, and I've been doing some work in the cloud events community as well. And I think Matthias kind of covered everything else that we're gonna talk about.
Jay, uh, do you want to, I was speaking on mute, sorry about that. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, um, uh, so so I'm Vijay Rodrix. I'm uh, I work in the Azure Kubernetes service uh, service serviceability team at Microsoft. Um, yeah, working with other and the other folks for um, for uh, a project, and I'm doing this as a hobby. Thank you, uh, Gusty. All right, I'm Gusty. I'm from Indonesia. I'm uh. uh Currently not in any affiliations. I'm uh I'm just an artist to to keep my skills intact. As mentioned, engineer, I have three years experience, and maybe uh I hope with during uh this few meetings that I'm attending with with uh with CNCF uh AI work group, I could get some opportunity or maybe some projects to go to work on. So uh, happy to work with happy to meet with you guys. Awesome. Claudia. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Claudia from IBM Research. Um, I work primarily on Kubernetes and OpenShift platforms. I focus on observability and also help out with building um, OpenShift-based infrastructure for uh, LLM, training LLM models, and also for inferencing. Amazing. Marlo? Hi, um, I am Marla Wernicke. I am now at GetMD. I just left Intel a bit ago. Um, we are working on uh, getting Slur working into Kubernetes. So that's why awesome. we're here. Ellen? Yeah, hello. Uh, I'm Ellen. Uh, I came from Cray and HPE. Now I'm at GetMD with Marlo, uh, also working on Slurm and Kubernetes and training. Awesome. And uh, Sri. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Sri. I'm part, I work at Intuit on the uh, developer platform, and I also work on an open source project called as uh, Numaflow. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. And we have Malini. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Malini from Intel, and nice to be here. Hi. And I work on a project called Opia, Open Platform for Enterprise AI. Awesome. Andre. Yeah, hey everyone. I'm Andre. I work at Apple. Um, I'm from the Qflow community. I've been there for the last uh, six years. Right now, I'm in the steering committee. So during my time in the Qflow, I was developing this new training a platform, training operator for fine-tuning and for large-scale training. Also, the Caddy project for parameter optimization. Right now, right now, we just try to see how CNC would help us to grow the community even further to make sure we can build the truly cloud-native uh, ML uh, infrastructure. And right now, here I'm helping folks to some white papers and also like exciting to work with all of you. Thank you. Amazing. Right, so that's me. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Ada Zaluk. I am in my day job. I'm a product manager at Red Hat. Uh, during these meetings and uh, in the CNCF, I'm trying to help marry AI to cloud-native. And hopefully that works out. So let's see. Um, all right, so we have a tight agenda. Well, considering that we also want to review. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hoover over quickly the project dashboard. So for those of you who don't know about it, we have a project dashboard where we track our current initiatives, how you bring something up here is you would go to tag runtime, um, the, uh, the repo, right? And create an issue. And you tag it with CNAI. And then later on, we add it to the dashboard and we reflect it in the status. This is a simple Kanban board just for us to have sanity on what we're working on, also to give the opportunity for folks to know and collaborate together uh, when, when possible. So, yeah, uh, what we did last time, or maybe the, the time before, was go through the in progress ones and see where we are, if there are any progress. Um, so Vijay, do you want to cover the first one, uh, scheduling? Uh, maybe give a short status on where we are and what we're planning to do next. Oh, cool. Um, so I didn't expect this. Um, OK, <laughs> just, just you know, yeah, I'm giving you the the mic because I know that you, you, you're you the one who spurred and seeded the, the discussions for this one. <laughs> I'm happy to Thanks, cover. Adam. 
Yeah, so uh, so like uh, how Adele said, I mean, we started this and we have a lot of contributors, including some from the current group uh, who are in the meeting. And um, and initially the con the challenge was, you know, to get in uh, additional content for the white paper. But right now the challenge is to stop, uh, you know, because uh, the amount of content seems to be unending. So uh, so uh, so I think I think at some point we'll have to like uh, like uh, you know stop somewhere uh, to publish this side of the white paper and any future content maybe we can add it in, a, in another pa uh, paper as per this discussion. So hopefully we'll be out and um, soon. Um, yes, and of course, like how Adele always says, uh, the 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 comments are welcome. Um, but uh, yes, but then. But then maybe we need to also consider like, uh, you know, uh, like closing up on this and doing a part two of it. Yep. Declare a freeze date and say all future stuff for the next version. Yeah. And it, it's currently in like lock mode where, where people are trying to converge um, and distill to the most important pieces, I guess. And so, yeah, like would, yeah. what happens with white paper? Uh, hey Vijay, is there like uh, this is my first meeting here, so I was wondering if there's any place uh, where I can read the white paper. And are you like, oh, great, okay. Yeah, I yeah. I'll just put the issue here in the chat. You can I think this is the the latest. Uh, yeah. So the doc. So we're trying to converge, but this is like consider this like you know, feel free to establishing command, but uh, we are not looking to do like massive changes. Uh, so, but always welcome to give feedback uh, and constructive or destructive even, uh, which we will take into consideration in the future. Adel, can I ask a quick, quick question, please? Um, yeah, just like we, so we did some refactoring for a preemption section, especially for uh, training workloads. Just wondering if, if we just accept these changes, if uh, VJ agree with, with them and just move forward with other comments. I think it's in the very, very, very bottom of this doc. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to close and record the comments. Some of the comments are great because it gives us a chance to learn about what we could do in the future. So they're more like issues for the future, but what will happen in the next meetings that we're going to go through and close most of the comments with whatever has been proposed and try to distill into the important pieces so that everything flows together into a nice document that people can read and consume. And, All right, and so I, I just add, had my... Yeah, yeah go ahead. I just ahead. want to say thanks to Andreas to so many other comments too. I mean, to, to a lot of folks, but since Andre is talking, yeah. Yeah, no worries. Like my question is only like the preemption section right now. It's at the very bottom, right before resource management. Just like wondering your thoughts if you get the chance to actually, I mean, at least like see because it has much more improvements compared to what they have before. Um, just wondering if you want to just keep it right. Um, yeah, I'm talking about this one, right? Yeah, I guess what will happen is we'll, these these proposal are going to be reviewed and accepted. Uh, most likely, okay. from strong opinion, uh, oppose it. And then what's going to happen is trying to remove what we don't need from the doc and distill it. Like, you know, like large language models, that distill it in a very short, small model so that it makes sense uh, uh, to everyone who reads it. We don't want it too long. We also want it to be more or less best practice and reference, and we can spoil the ocean with everything that is in there. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so that was the first one. The new summarizer, I'm not sure if we have Huamin uh, or or, uh, or some other folks who are working on this. I have not made the last two meetings, so I don't have the bleeding edge update on this. Um, but if, yeah, I don't, if there's anyone in, in here um, from the folks working on this, is, is anyone from the folks available or is in the call? If not, uh, yeah, this is the repo for it. Uh, it seems that we need to make sure that there is a nudge to, to make sure that this is continuing. Um, there was a separate meeting for this, which I didn't make, but yeah, I will, I'll keep it in mind and ping the folks. And I don't think we have Ron in the call as well to give us an update on the user survey. 
let's see. Okay. And the cloud native LLM runtime proposal. So this has been active. Um, it started in um in working group survey and and also in, in in working group AI here in the cloud native. So I'd encourage you to go and leave comments because what, what's this going to do is they're trying to propose an architecture for a cloud native AI gateway. What are the other alternatives? What are the standards to use for communication? There are a lot of things we've discussed this a last call, um, but the updates are mostly happening in the doc and people are commenting and, um, and discussing in, in there. So if you have feedback or if you have comments, you can go ahead and uh, and leave it and the discussion is, is happening in this document directly. So just bringing this awareness here, uh, we're also tracking it in working group AI because that's very related to the landscape. Um, any questions so far? Um, I, I can't find the hand raised. Can I say something? Let's see. I'll put the link for the issue in the chat. And yeah, I think this is the best place to, to go and comment if you have comments. If you also want to provide a quick feedback now, that's fine. Okay. Right. I guess silence is... <laughs> Agreement to move on. Uh, um, wait, hello, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you, Melini. Yeah. Huh, okay. Uh, so Adele, um, I'm just curious if anybody has done some, some, you know, like tracing or deeper look at, at frameworks like TGI and TEI and things like that, because what our team noticed is these systems have a queue and once work comes in, they land in those individual instance queues. So even when we do something like pod horizontal auto scaling, the new instance might not get any of the items because they've already been pre-distributed as opposed to having individual instances pick off a central queue. So when a new one comes in automatically, we've distributed over additional instances. So I'm wondering if anybody has noticed something like that and taken a deeper look. So Malini, my next demo is actually based on PGI and TEI, but given the GPU constraints, I am not implementing horizontal pod uh, scalability or anything, but that's an interesting scenario to look at. I'm actually planning to implement KEDA uh, to enable scale to zero. So that's on my list. I think uh, in next couple of weeks, I'll have an update of exactly on the scenario that you, you called out. Cool. And, uh... Janaki, uh, just take a deeper look and see how it's handling it. And maybe, and this is from Hugging Face, so maybe we have to like uh, provide a different architecture or say, hey, I'll introduce another entity in front as the work queue so that the individual instances of TGI pick up from that work queue and distribute over it. So keep that in mind and let's see how to handle it, okay? Sure, Thank sure. you. Yeah, I think we can also go into deeper discussion about this uh, during uh, uh, Jenna Karam's uh, uh, overview. All right, and then the last one is something I recently created. I also have an item in the agenda for it, but I can slash that item out because I'm already covering it here. So this is just an FYI. The folks uh, who also are collaborating are not in this call, but I wanted to bring this to attention. If you want to review, we are starting a, a document and try, trying to bring reference architecture and best practices for sustainable AI with cloud native workloads and environments, uh, feel free to peek into the issue and provide comments. And if you think, and the issue also has a document proposed, uh, or, or like the, let's say a skeleton document uh, with some fleshed out details, but it is ready for collaboration, I'd say. Um, Joseph. Hey everybody, yeah. uh, great to be here this morning. Um, I was going to mention, I'm, I'm with the, the end user tab and we have a, group, a working group that's uh, working on reference architectures and would be probably definitely interested in um, supporting, promoting and helping to drive 
whatever artifacts come out of this uh, into the end user tab. And what that would be is that you would get a lot of the uh, CNCF support along with it. So I will um, raise this in our next meeting um, and would definitely love to see if uh, we can help uh, support this. Yeah, sounds great. And I'm personally interested if you can invite me as well to the meeting where you'll discuss this uh, also to, to collaborate. Uh, I also think Vincent and Juan and Juan and Juan Min will also be interested. So it, I can I can share with you some details for the invite after all. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, this hits a few a few different of our uh, areas that we're chartering before uh, next QCon. So definitely would love to see if we can kind of align and support each other. Awesome, Marlo. Hi, um, I forgot to mention I'm a CNCF environmental sustainability tab chair, and this is the first time hearing of this talk, which is very confusing to me. Um, I would uh, recommend that we also go and give that to them as well to work with. There is no talk. This is, issue was created 46 minutes ago. We are just starting okay. the discussion. I have tagged you That's immediately. That's good to know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, please tag myself and Leo Pal Palk, um, and we'd also be interested, Joseph, in uh, yeah. working with you. This, well. this also links to tag environment sustainability okay. issue, which I think is related for collaboration. Um, so this is mm -hmm. the first artifact that comes out of this. And there's also collaboration opportunities with the folks at the Green uh, Software Foundation. Um, so there is, I think, a lot of hubs uh, converging into the into a nice funnel, which we can produce, uh, like producing a nice artifact for all of us. Um, yeah, so feel free to provide feedback. Uh, I think we probably might need to have more focused discussions uh, once the doc converges into something meaningful. I think it has a nice skeleton now. So I guess the recommendation would be to provide feedback on the document itself, maybe share it around for folks who you think is relevant to this discussion. And I'm also happy to participate in any of TAG um, environment sustainability calls so that we, we don't work independently. That's important. The next call is next Wednesday at uh, 8 a.m. PST. Okay. Then I'll. So I'll... If, if you would like to go or someone else would like to go and introduce us who's part of this, that would yeah. be helpful. I think Vincent will also be in next week. I'll bring it up um, and I'll add an action item here. Uh, let's see. And just contact me and I can add it to the agenda. Okay. Uh... All right. Oh, I need to introduce this. Also, maybe we can add also and user. All right. Um, so that was it for the backlog. Now we can move to the agenda. Uh, or let's say the in progress stuff, so we can look to the agenda. And yeah, we have uh, the first item, Jana Karam. Your floor is yours. Cool. Thank you. I will go ahead and share my screen. Just a sec. Okay, so I'll I'll demo the uh, application. I'll show you the architecture, and then. I, I'll be happy to do a deep dive on uh, any of those aspects. So the uh, core objective is to simulate an end-to-end -end, uh, workflow for RAG uh, all within the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, this is a fictitious airlines chatbot. I call it as Redjet AI Assistant. And uh, this chatbot is also running on Kubernetes. So you can basically ask questions like, what is the excess baggage fee? and Obviously, there is no content or context available to the chatbot, so it doesn't respond with accurate information. And now uh, what I do is I basically use a PDF. So this is the baggage policy PDF uh, that is used. So this is the uh, first version. So the excess baggage fee is 25 euros per kg per, for domestic and 
20 per kg for international flights. So what I'll do is I'll come to the command line and I will basically copy the V1 of the baggage policy to my data lake. And as soon as I copy this to the data lake, uh, an event gets triggered and it, it gets uh, populated in the vector database and basically goes through the RAG pipeline. So now, as soon as that is done, I leave the chatbot as is, and then I come back and ask exactly the same question. And it tells me uh, whatever we have seen in the PDF in the previous uh, part. So uh, this is pretty quick. Now, there is also a V2 document that I want to show you. So let's say at some point, the airlines uh, decides to bump up the uh, excess baggage fee from 25 to 30. Uh, so again, what I'll do is I'll come to the command line and I'll update my data lake with V2 uh, of the document. I come back to the chatbot and ask what is the excess baggage fee and it actually picks up the most recent uh, data. So uh, while this looks pretty obvious and pretty straightforward, uh, the beauty is this is all running uh, within one cluster uh, of, of Kubernetes. The entire RAG pipeline, which looks like this, is basically running on Kubernetes. So the idea is uh, the document gets uploaded to a data lake, uh, which is MinIO. And MinIO uh, has a webhook that is uh, wired to the bucket. And as soon as I do a upload, it basically invokes the webhook and there I chunk the documents, I uh, process them through the embeddings model and store them in Chroma, which is the vector database. That is the indexing part. And then uh, this is the chatbot UI that I have shown you. And when I actually send this uh, query, it again goes to the embeddings model, uh, gets, embed, uh, gets uh, vectorized or generates the same embeddings and then it performs a search. And with that context, it comes back and talks to Mistral, which is picking up the uh, context and the prompt and then response. So uh, this is the event-driven RAG architecture and I'll show you my environment. So uh, here is my test bed. If you look at what I'm running, I have two consumer grade GeForce RTX 4090s. It's pretty hard to plug uh, two giant RTX 4090s and the same motherboard but I, I had to hack my chassis and the and the cabinet to house those two uh, GPUs. And I have a pretty powerful PSU, a thousand watt PSU. And I have uh, an Intel Core uh, seven gen uh, uh, CPU, which is again, pretty powerful. I have about 24 cores and I run about 128 GB of RAM. Uh, one of the things that I do is instead of, uh, uh, pulling the models every time I launch the pod, I have an NFS uh, that is acting as my model repo. And I asynchronously pull the mod models from Hugging Face and I keep them uh, on my NFS mount. So uh, this is where I basically put my Hugging Face models. Uh, so when I launch my pods, I don't really pull them, but I just mount it and it, it instantly becomes available. And this is coming out of my NAS, which is a 10 TB NAS that is acting as my model catalog. And I have a separate job that asynchronously pulls these models from Hugging Face and caches them on the NFS share, which I mount on my Kubernetes cluster and eventually use the local path uh, to basically surface it into the pod. So that's the hardware infrastructure. Uh, and I have a single node uh, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, that's all I could afford. I have two more nodes, but they are not a part of the cluster. They are two independent clusters. I do fine tuning, I do inference, I do uh, rag and experimentation on each of those. They are not a part of single cluster, but I have six GPUs, uh, six 4090s in my lab, uh, each of them running as an independent cluster. So now coming to the uh, actual configuration. So uh, I create a uh, namespace called stack. So it looks uh, something like this. So when you actually look at all my deployments inside stack, I run the LLM, which is Mistral. I run embeddings, which is the uh, BGE large uh, embeddings model from Beijing Academy of AI. I run storage, which, are, which is MinIO. Uh, VectorDB is Chroma. The webhook is the backend that basically connects the dots. Uh, and and uh, th these are basically my deployments. and. 
each of them are exposed as independent services. I use Metal LB and I expose them as independent endpoints. I also have an ingress, but I choose to consume them independently. So I have a load balancer with well-defined static uh, IPs. So that's my uh, core infrastructure and uh, showing you how I went about uh, creating all of this. So I have a config map that basically defines my entire config. And then here is my LLM. So the LLM starts with mounting the NFS path um, as, a, as a PV. And then uh, here is my hugging face API token. I pull uh, Mistral uh, independently, and then I, I actually use it with hugging face text generation inference, the most recent version of the uh, HF TGI server. And this takes one GPU, one complete GPU. And uh, again, I basically mount uh, the NFS path here. I expose my LLM through the Metal LB and I have a static IP assigned to it uh, so that I know I can, I can talk to that via my Jupyter notebook as well. Similarly, I have an embeddings uh, server. Again, it's coming from the NFS path uh, and I use PEI, text embeddings inference server from Hugging Face and I use BGE large for embeddings model. And this takes one GPU. Um, so if you look at my GPU consumption, uh, the first GPU takes about one GB. This is the embeddings model. The second pretty much occupies 100% of my VRAM uh, and that is the Mistral 7B uh, model. Uh, so I can actually use Milverse or uh, any other GPU accelerated uh, vector database and still uh, use that uh, as a part of this. I have enough room to run a couple of other models or uh, vector databases. Uh, and this is my vector database, um, which is coming from Chroma. And uh, this is MinIO. I use the official MinIO image. Uh, and here is the webhook. I built a custom webhook. Uh, image to basically connect the dots. And here is a storage job. The job is responsible for wiring things together. It basically takes my webhook and uh, creates two uh, triggers. One every time I put the object, the other one is every time I delete the object. Think of it like the S3 plus Lambda combination. Uh, that's the job that I run. I can pretty much turn this into an init job as well. And finally, I have a custom chatbot uh, image that I built. Uh, which is what is powering uh, this interface. So uh, that's all. That's the event-driven RAG architecture all running on Kubernetes. I have some things to do. There is a backlog. Uh, I, I need to implement uh, the gateway API to make this more elegant. I need to implement KEDA to bring scale to zero so that I can uh, save some GPU uh, cycles. And I want to use NFS provisioner and, uh, and, and, and run a, a, a job directly on Kubernetes to pull the Hugging Face models. Uh, and I'm planning to run uh, an AI gateway uh, so that my API is consistent. Uh, so those are the things that I'm currently working on. I'm contemplating between Knative uh, serving and KEDA uh, and Knative eventing to basically bring scale to zero implementation. So, so that's the uh, quick walkthrough. I demoed this at Paris KubeCon uh, AI Hub. Uh, it was well received, and since then I made some modifications. And I'm also uh, I, I also built an agent. I don't have time to demonstrate that, but I have an autonomous agent running on top of uh, the same infrastructure. So uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. That was very insightful. Um, I think you will find also the next talk or the next uh, discussion very useful because um, it will have some key native. Um, uh, in it, um, I had one question uh, about the webhook. So in the project that we have was the um, LLM news summarizer. We're actually using it. It does the same things with new documents, but with GitHub Actions. Um, the storage is a bit different. So what is what is your webhook mechanism here? Like, how do you trigger that? So uh, so Minio is uh, an S three clone that runs on-prem. And uh, just like S3 uh, has Lambda triggers, Minivo supports multiple triggers and you can hook that to MQTT, NATS, RabbitMQ. Uh, the easiest that I found is, uh, is Webhook because I have more control. But by the way, I'm, I'm in the process of converting Webhook to a NATS 
uh, um, MQ so that it's much more scalable and more uh, robust. Webhook is very synchronous and it doesn't scale. So I'm in the process of replacing Webhook with a NATS uh, uh, message queue so that I have a worker that basically polls and, and does exactly the same. Awesome. Does anyone have questions? As soon as you introduce a new document, how much time does it take to like parse it, vectorize it, uh, index it and things like that? And do you remove the old instance? I mean, the old entries with the previous version of the document? Yeah, so it obviously depends on the size of the document. If you have a pretty large, like 100 page PDF, it's going to take a while. Um, I version and I, I use uh, the version when I query the metadata. So I retain multiple versions, so it's easy for uh -huh. me to roll back. Uh, okay. So again, you know, the idea is indexing is never synchronous. It is not a good idea to make that synchronous and use a webhook. Uh, it, it might actually become a bottleneck. So I'm going to replace that with an asynchronous mechanism. So uh -huh. that, the Nats thing you mentioned, yeah. Exactly. So it, it 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 basically happens in two different pipelines. One is indexing, the other one is query. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, but just can you give me some ballpark time, like one second, 100 milliseconds, whatever? Oh, for the PDF that I have shown you, it takes... It was a small one. Okay, three cool. milliseconds or something. It's pretty fast. Okay, awesome. And uh, one more important aspect is uh, currently the vector databases are not GPU accelerated, but uh, there is one database, which is Milvus, which is using uh, a model that takes advantage of the underlying GPU which I'm planning to use. And that apparently parallelizes indexing and also mm -hmm. query. So if I use that, it is going to be significantly faster because it, 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 it exploits the GPU for indexing and querying. What was the name of it? Uh, Mil Milvus. 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 And there's time. some Intel optimizations in that too for AVX 512, and then some generic optimizations that my colleague and I put into. So, uh, Malini, interestingly, yesterday I did a demo for Intel, a very similar demo, and I used one API uh, with Llama CPP, and I used AVX uh, and ICPX optimizations with Intel uh, extensions for PyTorch. Uh, so I did exactly the same thing, but on an Intel Xeon a Generation 5 processor. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, it, I have another question. Maybe when when you said you're using mounts, uh, so how does this work? Like initially, you, you have Mistral, you're pulling that from Hugging Face, and then you have a mount with all the models in there. Uh, how do you replace, or how do you uh, how do you detect that the new model is this the same mechanism? Yeah, so so one of the very important challenges in uh, I think I should I should look it up in your document that that calls out the challenges. The problem is um, when we scale out these pods, uh, and if you're not using a shared uh, storage like a uh, read write many, uh, the the problem is every time a new inference server comes up, it tries to pull the model from hugging face. So that's not a good idea. So it's better to cache them. Uh, and, and reuse the model across how many of our pods that we scale out. So uh, what I do is, uh, I, I so you know if you look at Bedrock, Vertex AI, or Azure, uh, Azure ML, or Azure AI, all of them use something called a model catalog. A model catalog is like the repository. Now, I, I simulate that with my NAS. So think of my NAS as the model catalog, and I have a cron job that actually goes to Hugging Face, checks for a new revision of Mistral, Lama, and a bunch of models that I, I care about. And if there is a new revision, it basically pulls them and puts them on the NFS model catalog. Uh, and uh, I, I use a config map on my Kubernetes to basically change the revision. And when I launch my inference server, it picks up the revision that's already downloaded. The idea is to avoid uh, downloading the model every time the pod uh, comes up. So you hook, so I know config maps do not immediately
they are not reconcilable by default. So do you have a SHA or something that you, you, you hook into, or do you for now like manually do that? It's manual. That, that's, that's something which is on my list. I need to figure out how to force uh, that. But, but again, it's not a good idea because I may have, you know, I have to figure out a draining mechanism to drain out the in-queue requests and figure out all of that. This is more of a POC. I haven't gone to that. Hey, wait, wait, wait. But this is telling me another thing. Originally, our images were pretty small little fellows for containers. And now with LLMs, it's like these giant monsters. Maybe as part of our work in CNCF and AI, we should offer something that's like a local registry that's not something that's just per node, but per cluster or maybe even you know across clusters. I think this would be a good project Absolutely. software to offer. Absolutely. Model catalog is an important building block. And I'm actually trying to use hardware uh, because technically speaking, hardware is an artifact registry and it is S3 compatible. So technically I can uh, basically store the model artifacts in hardware. Uh, but the uh, problem yes, is- Yes, yes. Huh. Yeah, hardware the, registry. Yeah, okay. But again, uh, the, the problem is uh, the, the load time. Uh, you know, ideally, uh, the the model binaries and blobs should be on the file system so that it is it is instantly uh, populated and pre pre populated uh, within the GPU. Uh, so I'm not sure how it, it would actually work with hardware, but I think a shared storage is a is is a is a an acceptable solution uh, because uh, we may have multiple nodes, multiple pods. I, I like the shared storage in the sense that it's like on your file system. So it's like, yeah. you know, how we download only if it doesn't exist. It's like I exist there type of thing. Exactly. And, and but maybe we instead of you having to do all the scripting for this, we can say if it doesn't exist, go download from the main mother registry type of thing. Which is hugging face. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, imagine there is a model catalog operator. Uh, and I basically define the operator saying, these are the models that I care about, you know, watch for, watch out for uh, Lama, Mistral, Gemma. And, uh, you know, here is the tag, you know, for example, just like how we do a GitOps based uh, rollback and, uh, uh, and, and deployments, we can actually say, uh, here is the minor version that I care about or the major version I care about. As soon as there's an increment, pull that. And the beauty is Hugging Face uses Git LFS. So, uh, we can actually take advantage of that and download only the blobs uh, that actually change. And we can be very smart in the way we layer these, these updates and revisions. We're building oh, Docker yeah. all over again. Similar. I think Olama has similar mechanism uh, where you can, yeah, Olama files and, and, and share models. Um, so uh, I, have a, I have a quick uh, question here, actually. So um, I see that you're using the GGUF files uh, for instance. No, no, I'm not using GGUF. I'm actually oh, using, no, my catalog has GGUF because I did the Intel demo yesterday on the same uh, same cluster, but I use non-quantized, uh, uh, you know, the normal foundation model. Sure, yeah. Uh, either ways, I mean, GGF or otherwise, uh, I think the LoRa adapters, right, per model are like an interesting way to approach this problem as well. Rather, like what Malini was saying, right? Like you don't need to increase the size of your image like tenfold just to, you know, stick in an image every time you want to uh, deploy a new one, right? So uh, you can use Harbor or whatever for, as a central repository, but then you could also just keep the LoRa adapters, which are fairly lightweight and have just the weights frozen for your particular job. So a base model like Mistral or something can be always there, uh, which you can pull through either, uh, you know, some storage or mounted PVC and things like that. And then the LoRa's are actually the purpose-driven things, which can be for routing, which can be for any specific rag purposes, which can be for specific use cases. So I was wondering what your opinion is on that. But uh, but I know uh, my understanding is LoRa comes in uh, only when you fine tune. Uh, but mm -hmm. if I am using the True. instruct version or the chat version out of the box, and I I don't fine tune, then uh, there are no adopters. There are no LoRa weights that I can merge. Uh, that's right. Yeah, but I mean, I guess my uh, my suggestion to use LoRa weights was to simply uh, you know not have 
new models for new purposes uh, from the ground up, right? Like not sticking in like seven TB models or whatever every time for a new purpose. So like, you know, you have like coding, you have uh, chat, you have like different different purposes and even routing, things like that. So it was kind of with that in mind. No, absolutely. I totally agree. But the way the foundation model providers are approaching this is they're actually launching a new revision. Uh, for example, uh, the difference between Mistral 7B 0.2 and 0.3 is significant. Yeah, huge, yeah. Function calling and all of that. So it's yeah. not just the LoRa adopter, but you got to download the entire model. Right. So like uh, the reason why I bring this up is because we were thinking about it in a way that, you know, these nightly LoRa uh, fine tunes can be mm -hmm. put in through a Jenkins pipeline and you can actually store them in S3 and you can pull them and use them and it kind of evolves over time. So, you know, it's not like your model is going to be the same uh, which you'll be using, especially if you are, you know, training it over code bases, things like that, which have constant change and constant churn. Absolutely. Now, the beauty is both uh, uh, TGI, VLLM, and for that matter, even uh, uh, TensorRT LLM, uh, most of these inference engines support merging these LoRa weights into the foundation model, the base model. Um, it's a great idea, but but again, if you're not using a fine-tuned model and if you're using the instruct model coming straight from the provider, there is very little that we can do there. Yeah, I, I think this is a, uh, we, we can take this discussion also on Slack. I think it's it's an interesting mix. You know, fine tuning is a completely different problem. I think uh, you're, you're, you're showing off how to deploy and that application and adapt. I think your, your demo was more towards the RAG um, uh, pipeline and how to adapt to new changes, which is great. Um, and I would, before we move to the next topic, do you have any repo where this is stored or anything that you can share with us so people can have a look? I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, create a new repo and also create a YouTube stream to basically articulate everything. I'm, I'm just polishing up a little bit. Uh, give me a couple of weeks and I should have like a very uh, repeatable, reproducible version of this. Yeah, and, and I think it could be also an interesting uh, uh, write-up, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, so yeah, please reach out when you are when you have uh, something that you would like to share with, with the group. And uh, yeah, that would be great. We have another topic in the agenda today, which I think you'll find interesting as well. So Callum and Matthias, do you want to uh, take us through it? Yeah. <clears throat> Sure. I was just wondering in terms of like timing, because we also have a demo and a little bit of like slides and want to have yeah. discussion. Um, does this, this ends in like eight minutes, right? So, yeah. So I think, I think maybe you can, I think the slides, um, if, if you can cover the slides, then the demo, we can, we can. Yeah. Callum, when you share your screen and I say a little bit what we do while you share the screen. So <clears throat> we, um, we have a POC that we um, worked on in terms of like LLM agentic workflows, basically to improve the LLM performance. Uh, this could all be seen like a powerful extension to like rag based applications. Um, yeah, so in, in order to do some more complex tasks like calculations, etc., cetera, RAG is not always uh, the way to go because you need interaction with like whether external systems or the deterministic functions. Like when you do mass calculation, like our very first demo, was doing some like, hey, give me the number of a very long string. And it was guessing. It was like all the time wrong. But when you actually give the LLM some tools, then you basically uh, have more deterministic. And the tool was invoked, and it was actually doing the correct math for that. So things like, uh, yeah, calculation, etc. And our example is based like on a chat application that says, like, what is the trend of like average resource consumption? Uh, and also, can you give me like some graphical representation? So, and on the next slide, we basically say that these tasks are hard, and it's it's much better to address that with like agentic LLM workflows because then you have like independent agents, like they can all like for monitoring, for instance, you can all have an agent that writes and executes a query for the actual resource data, so that comes back from your system. Like you can then also use some cost management agent which uses correct data like actual data rather than going going wild and doing some hallucination there yeah. so the benefit and the profit is here really like when you give some concrete tools to your workflow it will definitely minimize the risk of like incorrect 
uh, or inaccurate responses. And also it would allow users still to go further, like in a chatbot kind of application, to ask various questions about like the usage of resources and the particular course, because all of the information is like acquired from your actual tool, from your system, like that can run in Kubernetes, like inside of your on-prem cluster. And then Callum, I would say we have five minutes or so, want to give a quick demo of the code? Yeah, sure. So basically to start, um, I'm just going to reload this. This is just running on an OpenShift cluster and it's, um, a chatbot we used a uh, open source framework called Chainlet to kind of make the chat interface. <clears throat> um, so if we ask it a question right now, it doesn't know about any tools from one that we coded by hand, which just asks you, the human. It's called human tool, like if they have more information. So if I ask, um, what is the trend? It's going to ask me if I have access to the data, and I can just say I don't have the data. Um, and so it's gonna get the response and it says it needs access to the data to analyze the trend. So what we've kind of done is we were realizing a lot of the tools when we were looking around when people were building these with frameworks like Langchain um, were mostly just an API wrapper. And so we were looking at using Knative and Knative eventing and they, uh, in Knative eventing, we have this resource type called an event type and it, was mostly originally used to describe what kind of events you could consume, but we realized that they could also indicate what kind of events um, you might be expecting. And so I'm just going to, uh, uh, we, I have a moment a bit bigger so we can read it. I've got two um, event type files and if I show one of them, the resource cost one's better. Um, it basically has like a description. It's got some information about the, the schema for the thing. It's got a type field um, and it ref refers to a Knative service. So if I actually apply these two event types, um, then once they're created, I can come back here and reload it. And now we have a bit of code that basically maps these event types and the information that is included in essentially the metadata into what the LLM needs to know about tools to be able to call it. So if we try the same question again, um, now we're going to see it, first of all, gets the average resource consumption, um, which is just for now a uh, Knative service, which gives some hard-coded values. <laughs> um, and then I'll say there is no GPU. I guess I asks about the GPU. Um, and then it's going to do the resource cost calculator to calculate the cost of these different things. And so it was able to calculate the cost in the memory um, for the past month. Um, and this was all done. It, we never told it explicitly how to call these different tools. For example, the cost calculator or the resource consumption or how to map the data between them. We just said um, with these event types, there is um, this metadata, which we mapped into the tools. And what we're hoping to kind of do going forward is come up with a more standard way of describing tools in Kubernetes so that you can build these more um, useful kind of agent workflows that Matthias was talking about. Yeah. Um, Matthias, you want to take over from here? <clears throat> yeah. Can you go to this? Yeah, right. So one of the, the things that we yeah right thank you one of the things that we also wanted to hear about like um in terms of like having some proposal or no can yeah right this this one like some proposal that we can have like a more streamlined or standardized uh, api for like discovering things like llm agents or what tools are there and once there's a standardized kubernetes based like API or mechanics, we can also have like a marketplace integration. This would solve like UX issues like better discovery. If we standardize some of the labeling, this will help with the aggregation for like agents, like you can apply to your new workloads or your existing workloads like deployments. Um, you can apply some sort of label and then it can be understood. This is a tool with some proper labeling and description on there. So what we were using as tools it's really just very simple Knative serving services. They were created with Knative functions. So at the end of the day, these were Golang um, functions 
built and sticked into a container and Knative serving basically gives you the scale to zero. So when there's no request after some time against one of these tools, they scale back to zero. So there's nothing running idle on the cluster for your tools. But if you can standardize the labeling, then maybe discovery on that one is also nicer. And the overall goal of a more streamlined API and standard here or initiative is like that you can really have like a more seamless integration with existing workloads as I was saying before so there's probably lots of benefits there it's much easier for development when you like based on standardized technologies the UX is very much improved when you have like things like a marketplace and and overall like enhancing the functionality and the performance of like LLM based um, applications is something like RAC can already extend that because you give it your own documents but as we were demonstrating here sometimes you need a little bit more deterministic like you need actual tools because you want to operate on something that's being calculated in your system rather than here's a document where everything is sitting in so this is some of the ideas and i guess maybe we continue next week i don't know how many time still left but this is something where we also want to have like some discussion we were we were identifying this working group as a potential audience that might be interested and what we found very nice as well checking the agenda that there was also already a kubernetes based demo on the agenda which we saw before and i guess that kind of goes nice and hand in hand um i i i was hearing also some of knative being mentioned there um Maybe we can work together and improve something like building a demo. Our code is already uh, visible. It does not require to run on OpenShift. We were just showing it on OpenShift, but you can also run it in your kind cluster. The README has detailed instructions if you want to play with it. Um, yeah, and really, I guess the ask here is um, interest in that stuff. What could be potential next step? Um, maybe speak to some concrete communities that could work on this one or taking it more generically like an overall approaching standard that's why we also talk here in the cncf um and just curious what what people think about this idea for like standardization around it would you put that github link in the chat yeah he just yeah. he just um sure he put it in there callum did it already i think callum oh, yeah i see it now yeah yeah <laughs> But I can stay if you condition. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <You're> right. <laughs> yeah. So I think Matthias, I think that the demo was 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 great. Um, I would. Can you start uh, a Slack thread on this? We will also. Yeah. You're gonna use the Slack thread to feed and gather more feedback, and then we yeah. can bring the topic again next time with people yeah. asking questions and being more yeah. direct about. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's perfect. I mean, that we can take it asynchronously until next Friday, maybe. That's perfectly fine with, with us, definitely. Callum has to go. Not sure if he's still here. <laughs> I think he dropped. Uh, yeah, people. right. <laughs> but I, I'll point you, if you're not already on, on our working group channel, I'll point you there. And yeah, I'd recommend you start a Slack yeah, thread. Sweet. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, I will. I will start a thread probably on Monday because it's late here in Germany right now. So I have to also run very soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but thanks for the time and thanks for the opportunity to present. And I really look forward for discussion because um, this is something. I mean, the application that we saw is based on like Chainlet and Langchain. It's all very specific in there. So we made it aware. Like, check for these event types because we have them. That's our API, right? That's why we used event types. That is really the PUC baseline. We didn't want to write and invent something for the gluing so we told it look here and we have the mechanics to describe stuff and based on the description because it said already you can invoke this tool if you want to do like resource consumption calculations right so based on the description the llm was knowing which one to invoke but everything is very much specific to like frameworks etc if there is a little bit more like of a standard approach for describing that's really what we wanted to discuss but let's take it in the slack i i really like the idea from you adel and uh, maybe we continue the discussion like in a synchronous way next friday awesome i have questions i'll do that thank you very much for the discussion thank you all for attending the thank meeting you. um and look forward to see you next time all right have a good day everyone have a nice weekend bye, -bye. see you next week
वापस वसूल मणि पाता टीवी ओके सो गीता वनर मणि पर टीवी पार्क कौन कार्य कर रहा है शुरू है ओके गुड अपन पौध और बिट्टी किंदा पौ Yeah. Oh, so cute, Amma. I think very TV screen. I think this could be important. 